Ping, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a pleasure to see all of you here joining us this evening on this wonderful evening. As my friend and colleague said, Maxine, this God-given evening, beautiful weather, and we had a lot of people praying that it was going to be very nice, and those prayers were rewarded. Thank you all very much, those of you who are watching, uh, both online as well as uh, on TV. And Mom, I think you are watching. I hope you're feeling well, and I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, when I retired in 2011, and I was then talked into this role, not just by some of my colleagues here, some of my friends, including the premier, and that man over there who is, he says I'm nearly as big as he is. I don't think I'll ever be as big as he is. I'm taller than him, but <laughs> that's about all. But it was, it, was, it was their encouragement, but it was also the circumstances that we found that any of us could see this country being in at the time. We had a very dire situation. There was a lot of concern about amongst the average person in Cayman, amongst the business people, the business community. What they were observing, what we were all observing, was a country with an economy that was effectively flatlined. There was a complete lack of trust and confidence in government. There were serious concerns. And one of the things we had to do coming into office at the end of May 2013, was we had to administer CPR to this country. And we all, you all know what that acronym means. Was it cardiopulmonary? No, 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 no. What we administered was the Cayman Progressives resuscitation of this country. That's what we administered. We brought back trust and confidence. We brought back the pride of being Caymanian, ladies and gentlemen. And if you look at the performance of this government over the last five years, you will see that that has been reflected throughout. There is no question about that. You know, the business community, today will say a lot of very positive things, but there are those out there who try to pry down the business community and suggest that they're out of touch and they don't understand. We all understand, they understand, that things are not perfect for everybody. But the reality is that unless businesses are healthy and can employ people, things would be a lot worse and there'd be a lot more people in difficulties. So, tonight, we have a lot to be thankful for, but we also recognize this entire team, all of my colleagues here, and every one of the new candidates that we have, have recognized that we still have a lot of work to do in this country. There's a lot of work to do, because because things are dynamic, things are changing all the time, people are growing up, and we need to have a country which is meeting the needs, meeting the expectations for everybody. And the young people in this country need the opportunities that those of us who are sitting up here had in the past. 
They need those same opportunities, and it is our job, ladies and gentlemen, to make sure that we create the right environment and that we create the opportunities that they have, that they can have, the same kind that we had when we were their age. Now, the financial services industry is obviously one which is very near and dear to my heart. It is also the major component, or one of the major components of our local economy. Yes, we've been making lots of attempts to try to diversify the economy. We've been putting in place lots of great underpinnings and platforms from, with it, from where this can be done. But at this point, we still have financial services as a very, very significant component of our economy. Let me give you some numbers, ladies and gentlemen. There are over 4,000 Caymanians that are employed in the financial services industry. And a whole range of positions, from, from senior partners in accounting firms and, and, and law firms to those that provide ancillary services, you know, sell the copy machines, fix those. All across a spectrum of an economy, we have Caymanians participating. And if the industry is not doing well, is not strong, and cannot withstand the international scrutiny and the agendas that are being pursued, then all of them, all of their interests are at risk, and we cannot allow that. So our job over the last four years, ladies and gentlemen, has been to absolutely make sure that the financial industry remained very strong and continued to grow. My job was to promote, to protect, and to develop the financial services industry. And ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake about it. With my colleagues here, that is exactly what we have done. That is exactly what we have done. Do not, do not listen to the comments out there that somehow we have changed direction on some issue or some policy which has had an impact. Those people who make those kinds of comments, first of all, those types of things are irresponsible because we all know that words matter these days. We know, let's ask Donald Trump, words matter. And everything that is said can have an impact down the road. And it may not be far down the road. So, when you hear them talking about the financial services industry being negatively impacted, do not believe them. You know who I want you to ask? I want you to go and find some significant people in the financial services industry. Go and ask them if they feel that the financial services industry has been well served by this progressive government. At the end of the day, they represent the body that can tell you whether this government has served the industry well. And based on all the feedback I have had from them, they are very happy with the work that we have done they are very happy that we have met the challenges head on. They are very happy that we have someone of the stature of our premier, Mr. Alden McLaughlin. <laughs> who 
has experience in the financial services industry and who has the political experience as well to stand on a world stage and talk and talk about the achievements of the Cayman Islands, talk about the facts around the Cayman Islands in relation to transparency, in relation to sharing of information, and in relation to our co collaboration and cooperation with international obligations. Tell me, ladies and gentlemen, if there was a former minister of all departments and ministries, minister of all things, who could actually go and represent this country at an anti-corruption commission of all things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this government has done a very good job in relation to the financial services industry. The industry probably has one complaint, and that is they feel that they wanted more money invested in it on the basis of comparisons to other jurisdictions. But you also know the realities, and you will hear from my colleague, Minister Archer, as well. You also know the realities of the balances, the compromises, and the way we have managed the financial position of this country, the economy of this country, to get to this point where we're in full compliance with the PMFL, and we're no longer subject to the UK review of our budget. Those, those things that we have done along that path while addressing the needs of a plethora of interests in this country. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, this government has done a good job, a very good job in that respect. And I believe, and I am constantly told, that the financial industry services, financial services industry are happy with what we have done. Let's not forget as well that when we came into office, the industry had an agenda. I think it was about 10 years long waiting for the types of products and services that they, types of products and services that they needed to have reflected in legislation. We have delivered on all of those outstanding items, ladies and gentlemen. All of them. We have worked hard. We have battled through issues of trying, to, trying to, to build legislative drafting capacity sufficient to keep up with the agenda. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been reflected in the legislative agenda, agenda that we had over the last four years. My ministry probably has, and probably will for some time now, have the record for the, um, for the number of legislative items dealt with in the last four years. The majority of which, the majority of which, ladies and gentlemen, relate to financial services. Having delivered on those types of things, I don't see how they cannot be happy. Ladies and gentlemen, the, in relation to the commerce side of things, I wanted to talk very quickly as well on small businesses. Let me tell you why small businesses are important. 
If you have a hundred, if you have ten large businesses that create ten jobs, that's a hundred jobs. But if you support and create the right environment for small businesses to grow, to develop, you then create an environment in which 500 small businesses could hire one person each. And that amounts to 500 new jobs. And ladies and gentlemen, given the fact that we have had good economic growth over the last four years, culminating more recently with at least 3%, around 3% gross domestic product growth. Those are the types of environments which promote that kind of activity and growth for small businesses. And we have taken very proactive steps in building uh, initiatives to give them an advantage as well. We reduced duties from 22% down to 20%. We, we put in place programs for discounts for business license fees. And ladies and gentlemen, 2,500 small businesses took advantage of those. And today we have a growth, a net increase of about 1,000 new companies registered over the last four years. All of that, all of that ladies and gentlemen, points to one thing. Better opportunities for Caymanians, better opportunities for their businesses, and better and an and improved position for their families. So, ladies and gentlemen, I know you will agree with me. This government has delivered in relation to some of the biggest sectors of our economy. We have delivered in relation to financial services. And we have delivered in relation to small businesses. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me say this. You have every reason, and there's 15 reasons up here. You have every reason based on our record and our performance to give us your support, to give us your confidence to put this government and all of our colleagues here today on this platform back in the Legislative Assembly to, to run the, the country, to provide the benefits, and to provide the opportunities to you, your children, and their children over the next four years, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful evening. And you, come here!